escalating conflict between Israel and Hamas claimed more lives today. Palestinian officials say at least three people were killed in Israeli airstrikes overnight. Palestinian officials also said ten members of one family were killed and their home was destroyed. Israel says the raid was targeting a leader of the Hamas rocket launching unit. But the IDF says it is not sure if that Hamas member was killed. Sunday was the deadliest day of the conflict with 32 Palestinians killed in Gaza. That brings the total death toll to about 80 since this recent conflict began. Air raid sirens went off repeatedly in the Israeli town of Ashkelon, forcing residents indoors. Israel says it intercepted 41 of the 146 rockets which had been fired from Gaza on Sunday. Bystanders work frantically to pull survivors from the rubble of a house in Gaza destroyed by an Israeli missile. But this is more about recovery than rescue. At least 11 people, including five women and four children, died when the two-story dwelling was flattened. This is the single deadliest incident so far of the five-day Israeli operation in Gaza. Why did the missiles attack children, he asks, clearly distraught. What did they do? Why do they need to attack children? No, there's no way there were militants inside, he says. If there'd been Hamas, they would have already left. There were all civilians inside, young children, and a mother and father, no one else. Health workers do what they can to help the injured, ferrying them to hospital in cars. Officials say at least 66 Palestinians have been killed in the offensive, including 32 civilians. Three Israeli civilians have also died. Why do we have to be killed, she asks. Why can't we have a normal childhood? We have observed a massacre by the Israeli. They targeted a building inhabited by two families. That building was destroyed completely. And the casualties were four women, four children. In addition to this, we have about 30 wounded people from the same family. It was the fifth day of Israeli strikes on Gaza, coming from both the air and the sea. More than 500 missiles have been fired in return from Gaza into Israel. The Israeli government says they must stop if there's to be any ceasefire. If not, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has warned that Operation Pillar of Defense might be stepped up. High in the skies above Tel Aviv, Israel's missile defense system locks on. Intercepting another incoming missile from Gaza. Iron Dome is credited with taking out over 200 inbound missiles with its claimed an impressive 90% success rate. Each of the batteries cost $50 million. Developed by Israel's state-owned munitions industry, there are now five deployed. The latest towed into position outside Tel Aviv on Saturday. So how does the Iron Dome system work? Well, when rockets are launched, in this case from Gaza, Israeli radar locks onto them. The system predicts the route they'll take. If they're heading for open ground, they'll be ignored. If they're going to land in a populated area, the system calculates where it's safest to intercept them. Ground-based missiles are then fired, and the target is normally destroyed. The rocket fire on Tel Aviv, the first since the Gulf War in 1991, has significantly widened hostilities. The newly developed Iranian-made Farge 5 missiles launched by militants in Gaza now put 3.5 million Israelis in range. That's half the country's population. A sentiment shared at Gaza's Shifa hospital by mourners for another Hamas militant targeted today. Witnesses showed us the shell that killed the militant and his young niece. They claim it was fired from an Israeli ship. And as we spoke, warships fired more rounds. But that volley didn't stop the funeral. More about expressing defiance here than sadness. They are now taking the bodies of the Hamas fighter and his nine-year-old niece to be buried. He was apparently the target. She was not. But here in war times, 
They are both being considered martyrs. Israel wants to eliminate Hamas's leadership, but that's coming increasingly with a cost to civilians. The doctors and a medical staff here are battling to keep people alive, but in many cases they're losing that battle. This is the third dead body that I've seen. Uh, there's something of a queue to get into the lift and to go down to the mall. I'm told by the staff here that this has been going on for days now. More and more people are dying as this conflict seems to escalate. If anything. The Israeli defense forces have carried out hundreds of attacks now. They are aiming for specific targets, but Gaza is a city teeming with people. Nowhere here is far enough away. Nowhere is safe. They are savage killers. They are savage criminals. And so he's lost many family members. Yes. Most of them, he lost his wife and others are uh, wounded. Uh, some of them uh, are in severe uh, conditions. And, you know, this is savagery. This is inhumanity. The already scarred streets of Gaza are deteriorating. Driving through them, it becomes clear just how many airstrikes are coming in. Every few minutes, another collection of ambulances and onlookers. The latest missile hit. But just the latest. There's always another one. A spokesperson for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu would not comment. Vice Prime Minister Moshe Yalon said the government could accept a ceasefire if Hamas halts its attacks. The United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon is due in the region. He's promised to make a personal appeal for an end to the violence. In a statement he said, I strongly urge the parties to cooperate with all efforts led by Egypt to reach an immediate ceasefire. Any further escalation will inevitably increase the suffering of the affected civilian populations and must be avoided. People living in Gaza have mixed feelings about Mr. Ban's visit. I do not welcome him because he came here during the last war and did nothing for us. And he will never do anything for us. He's most welcome. We hope his visit will be a positive one. In recent days, speculation has been building that Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi is trying to broker a ceasefire. He's been contacted by a host of Western leaders most notably U.S. President Barack Obama. There is no country on earth that would tolerate missiles raining down on its citizens from outside its borders. So uh, we are fully supportive of Israel's right to defend itself. But Hamas missiles keep coming. For a fourth day, Tel Aviv was targeted. The rocket intercepted. Israel's leadership continues to signal it's prepared to take this further, perhaps to a ground war in Gaza. We are exacting a heavy price from Hamas and the terrorist organizations, and the Israeli Defense Forces are prepared for a significant expansion of the operation. The challenge for Benjamin Netanyahu and Hamas is finding ceasefire terms that both can portray as a victory. Israel has already said it's not interested in a temporary truce. This time, it wants the rockets from Gaza stopped for good.